6030 Ultimate Compressor. How does it work? Well, I'll show you. On the left hand side of the screen, you have these module selector buttons. As you click each one, a different interface appears on the right hand side of the screen. Now it's not just an interface change. As we click these buttons, we actually swap out different algorithms. How are the modules arranged? Well, from the top of the list, we have the transparent, soft kind of compressors. At the bottom of the list, we have compressors that are, well, gosh darn aggressive. Can you say, rock band compressors? That'd be some of these. In the center section, we have input and output meters. We have an output makeup gain. We have a button to let you choose the side chain signal or the regular input to the compressor. And you can listen to the signal that's causing the compressor to compress. That's how the 6030 works. Let's talk about those modules now. Hot dang. The first module in the 6030 is the U670. Modeled after a Fairchild 670 that was loaned to us by Jeff Balding at Underground Sound in Nashville, Tennessee, way back in 2000. That's right, some guy we didn't really know loaned us a $30,000 unit, of which there are probably only 10 working ones in the entire world, and he just sent it to us because he thought we were so awesome. True story, a little crazy. Well, when we had that Fairchild 670, we noticed how its attack ballistics weren't quite enough for modern music production. Oh sure, we kind of slosh around the dynamic range of the audio and make it sound cool, but a lot of times it just wasn't grabbing things enough. So when we made the U670 over here in the 6030 Ultimate Compressor, we went ahead and adjusted those attack ballistics and a few other things to make it more appropriate for typical music production of today. It still has that warm, cool sound that everyone likes in the Fairchild 670, but it's been tweaked by us. And you can only get it here in the 6030. The 6030 module called MooTube is based on an all-tube design. Now what the heck does that mean, all-tube design? Well, I'll tell you. That means that the circuits aren't as reactive as they might be if they were solid state, or heaven forbid, digital. So, an all-tube design lets you have something that can really ride the audio and give you a good compression kind of sound, but not, well, sound like a compressor. Now the Moo tube has threshold, attack, and recovery times, and they're all independently adjustable, and a really nice sexy meter. It's good on a variety of things like drums and guitar and vocals and all that kind of stuff, but again, with that all tube design, you have a compressor that's going to kind of more ride the curves as opposed to really try to grab the audio and alter it in a way that you may not care for. That's the Moo tube. Boy, do I have a comp for you. It's the iComp, another module in the 6030 Ultimate Compressor. It's blue, whoa, look out, but it's cool. How is it cool? It only has a threshold and ratio control because we automatically adjust the attack and release controls for you as you adjust the threshold and ratio controls. That means you can work faster, better, smarter, and look like a pro. It's great for drums and vocals and all that stuff. But imagine as you're trying to adjust your threshold control on a typical compressor where you have to manipulate the attack and release and the threshold, you don't have to do that with the iComp. You just play the threshold and ratio and you're good to go. That's the iComp. It's blue. And it's for you. The Opto-C and Opto-L modules are kind of related. How? Because they both use an electrical optical attenuation circuit model, meaning that when you overdrive this product by turning up the peak reduction in either the Opto-C, that's the compressor module, or the Opto-L, that's the limiter module, you won't actually over-limit or over-compress the signal because it has some special curves under the hood that have been modeled by the MIG DSP for the last decade. And now we put them here in the 6030, just for you. The British C module is modeled after the Neve 33609 or the 2254E, for those in the know. And it sounds mighty good. Why? Well, I'll tell you why. Sure, it has the four standard controls, threshold, ratio, attack, and release. It also has some smarty pants stuff under the hood. So even when you really want to drop that threshold all the way down and have the fastest attack time and the fastest release time, oh, the British C module ain't going to distort. Those guys on the other side of the pond, they put some smart stuff into their boxes, and golly dang, we modeled it. And it's here, in the British C module. The Overeasy module is not named after the egg on your shirt. It's named for the compression curves inside of it. 
Now, it does have standard controls like threshold, ratio, attack, and release that help you dial in any kind of sound that you want. But that smooth compression curve, that's the transition from uncompressed to compressed, will make it sound as if like you know what you're doing, like a professional. So, things like nylon guitar, acoustic piano, those kind of instruments that you want to compress it, but you don't want to make it sound compressed, the Overeasy module is for you. The SST-76. It does not stand for supersonic transport. It means solid state compressor. But what does that mean? That means with those standard controls like threshold, ratio, attack and release, you can crush the crap out of stuff. Drums, rock band, it's for you. And it still sounds good. So if you want to get some aggressive kind of compression sounds with a McDSP design key circuit, oh, the SST-76, it's for you. The FRG444, that's three fours, not four. Confusing? You bet. That's what we just call it, the frog. What's it good for? Let me tell you, it's good for crushing the crap out of things. Not frogs, you know, audio tracks. Your lead vocal, your drum sub, possibly those backing vocals and that annoying guitar solo. The FRG444 doesn't deliver digital distortion like some of those other cheap free plugins you might have gotten with your DAW. It actually delivers analog harmonic richness and goodness that you want to have. So the next time you want to crush the crap out of something, think about the frog. Remember, FRG444. That's three fours, not four. Mixing inside the box. It's something that you do every day. But sometimes you want to think out of the box. No, I'm not talking about modeling some piece of gear that was made when dinosaurs roamed the earth. Ooh, spooky time. I'm talking about trying something new, different, a little bit aggressive, a little bit crazy. That's right, I'm talking about, drum roll please, the D357. It's a compressor from McDSP, totally made by us. It's the last module in the long line. That's 10, 10. Did I mention the 10 modules in the 6030? I hope I did, because this is the last one. There's a threshold control, an attack and release control, and then there's a crush control. You can do some, more, or tons. Does that give you an idea of what it's for? That's right. If you want to really hit something hard, the D357 is the plug-in for you. <laughs>